Hi guys, Matt from Haltech here, and today on Tech Tuesday, we're going to turn up the pressure, the fuel pressure that is. Now more often than I'd like to, I find myself explaining to people about fuel pressure, not because it's all that complex a topic, but more I think because it's not something we often think about until after we have a problem. So today in Tech Tuesday, we're gonna go through the concept of fuel pressure, both as an absolute value and also as a pressure differential, namely across the fuel injector. So let's start with the fuel system as a whole. We've got a fuel tank where the fuel is stored. We have a fuel pump that pressurizes the fuel and moves the fuel from the pump along the high pressure fuel line up into the fuel rail. We have the fuel injectors, and then we have the fuel pressure regulator that ensures we have a constant fuel pressure in the fuel rail. And finally, we have a return line that bleeds unused fuel back into the fuel tank. So that all seems pretty simple, right? So let me ask you this. If I have 40 PSI fuel pressure across the fuel injector, then how much fuel pressure does my fuel pump need to create? And if you said 40 PSI, you'd be dead wrong. Well, most of the time anyway. But why? That's because of this little guy here, the vacuum port on the fuel pressure regulator. Now, the purpose of linking the fuel pressure regulator to the intake manifold is to retain a constant pressure ratio across the fuel injector. Of course, the open end of the fuel injector down the bottom here sprays into the intake manifold. The top is in the fuel rail. So perhaps the easiest way to think about this is to imagine what would happen if we didn't have the fuel pressure regulator referencing to the manifold pressure. Well, when we open the fuel injector, we have the same pressure on both sides of the injector in the rail and in the intake manifold there. So no fuel would flow from the fuel rail into the intake manifold. Now, of course, this isn't possible in the real world. The engine would have run so lean that it misfired long before that happened, but you get the concept. The only way to ensure that we have consistent fuel flow through the injector is to ensure that the fuel pressure ratio across the injector stays constant. All right, so let's get back to that previous question then about the 40 PSI of pressure across the injector. Well, what does that mean for the fuel pump? So let's assume again that we've got 40 PSI of boost pressure in the intake manifold and this time we are actually maintaining that 40 PSI of fuel pressure across the injector, how much fuel pressure does the fuel pump need to produce? Now, if you answered 80 PSI, you'd be correct. That's because every pound of air pressure in the intake manifold that goes above atmospheric, we have to rise the pressure of the fuel in the fuel rail by the same amount. Now, this is kind of interesting because if we look at the fuel flow rate of an electric fuel pump, we actually see that flow decreases as pressure increases. Now that's weird, because if you've ever purchased a new fuel pump, you've probably seen that a lot of the time fuel pumps get rated by horsepower. And you might see marketing literature that says, hey, this pump's rated for 400 horsepower or 1200 horsepower, whatever. What I'm trying to submit to you here that this is just marketing spin because 400 horsepower can come in all sorts of different forms. So for example, 400 horsepower could be from a 500 cubic inch V8. That can be really reliably achieved with no turbo, no supercharger, just good old fashioned engine displacement. In this case, the fuel pump never needs to produce more than 40 PSI fuel pressure because the intake manifold pressure never gets into the positive pressure range and so 40 PSI is all the pump ever needs to do. But let's take that same 400 horsepower and squeeze it out of a 1300 cc four cylinder engine. Now you're having to stuff probably 45 plus pounds of positive pressure, boost pressure into the intake manifold to get even anywhere near enough air to get near the 400 horsepower mark. Let's go back and look at the fuel pressure here and see what the pump needs to do. We need to maintain the 40 PSI across the injector, plus now we've got 45 PSI coming up from the intake manifold, so we've got to squeeze 85 PSI of fuel pressure out of the pump. Now that's a big ask for many electric fuel pumps, and indeed, the same pump that can feed 400 horsepower worth of fuel into a naturally aspirated engine is unlikely 
to be able to feed the same amount of fuel into a turbo engine, just because of the extra pressure. All right, so why is this important? Well, I think it's important because I get a lot of these questions. And when you're sizing a fuel system, probably the most important thing to look at is to know how much boost pressure you're going to run. Because this is probably the limiting determining factor on how big or what pump to choose, what size lines to choose. And it's certainly a lot more important than just knowing the amount of horsepower that you're planning on making. Well, that's an overview of fuel pressure in our fuel system. And it's all we have time for today on Tech Tuesday. I'm Matt from Haltech and I'll see you next Tuesday. Don't forget, put your questions down below and I'll try and answer them in a future episode. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.